Who leaves a cow by the roadside where it dropped dead? Only someone helpless, watching her livelihood crumble. Kenya has declared this year's drought a national disaster, but here in Kilifi County, it is a personal tragedy for people like Janet Monje. Every time one of her calves or cows drops, they can't raise it again because it's got no energy, there's no grass, and so this is what's left of her heart. The land has dried up, and the future looks uncertain, shaky. I can't find grass and I have to buy water for them. That's the big burden I have. Dead livestock litter the landscape here. They're dying faster than their owners can dispose of them, so they leave them to rot. Thousands of livestock have died here from poor pasture conditions and water stress. Damangala tells me she's worried sick about her dying herd. This will be the eighth cow in two weeks that they have had to slaughter. And no, no, go papia, he's in Takufa. And she's afraid these two will go as well. So that will be the ninth and the tenth. My family depends on these cows. Even the economy of this area is built around them. God, show us the way because I don't know what I'll do. This once prosperous agricultural community has become a dusty, barren wasteland. The region has suffered two consecutive poor rain seasons and has seen more frequent droughts over the past decade. Why are we, are we, should we go through this? Yet there are people out there who are the biggest polluters who are making us go through, uh, undergo through the, this kind of stress. Kelly Banda is a lawyer who says the impact of climate change on his area turned him into a climate activist, helping his community cope with their new reality. What's at stake here? The situation is going to worsen, and I feel like um, my people are going to vanish. The whole situation is going to worsen. People are going to die. More people are going to die. Food and water have become scarce for the people of Kilifi and the animals. A perfect storm for a community dependent on their land and their livestock. The government distributes food aid to those most in need, but they say it's irregular and insufficient. The water got all the way here. Yeah, a village elder shows me one of the many dams that have dried for months, leaving the people, animals and land thirsty. Some have turned to producing charcoal to support their families, a major strain on the already depleted environment. This heap will sell for about $4, hardly enough to feed one family for a day, let alone three. It's rare to see older women, they're all older than 60, doing this charcoal business. It's usually younger men. But with the drought having hit this hard and many men having left the village, this is the only way they have a way to raise their families and to make a little cash. That is a mangrove ecosystem. A stone's throw away, Kalifi's coastline is a gem by the Indian Ocean. But even this marine ecosystem is under threat from rising sea levels and destruction of the mangroves by those who live around them. A local official also blames it on the world's worst polluters. Because you live here and you have to deal with the flooding and the hunger and the rising sea levels and the deaths that this leads to. Are you angry about it? Of course. We are very angry about it because we are not the cause of all this mess. We, there are people, there are countries who caused all this. Yeah? And they've, been, they've continued doing so without fear, without any commitment to reduce the emissions. That evening, the community prays for blessings from above to come down, maybe a little rain to save their crops and their animals. Africa contributes less than 5% of the greenhouse gases responsible for changes to the climate, but is a continent most vulnerable to its consequences. Larry Medowo, CNN, Kilifi.